good evening, and thank you for joining us at Holy Trinity as we have a service of the longest night, also known to some of you as a service for Blue Christmas. Tonight is not only the longest night of the year, but traditionally, in many of our faith denominations, it's a night when we take pause and we take time to pray about those people that have died throughout the last year and the losses we have suffered. This year, we have felt very important to focus on the losses of the year. Between the pandemic and everything else, this is a year where we need to give ourselves permission to have time to sit down, reflect, and lament. Tonight, we are really happy to have joining us Rebecca Craver from Edmonton Moravian, as well as Aaron Thomas from Trinity Lutheran Church. All three of our churches tonight are joining for this ecumenical service. I do invite you throughout this service to light some candles of your own as you remember those in your life that you have lost or things that you are lamenting the loss of. As we prepare our hearts for this longest night service, I invite you to sit and reflectively listen as Rhea plays us a beautiful prelude.
we come to this service to take time out from the daily busyness, to take time away from the lights and glitter, to take time to remember our past losses, to take time to acknowledge our present sorrow, to take time to express hope in a future joy. We come just as we are, with our own stories and emotions, our own concerns, but each of us comes before the same God who welcomes us just as we are. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come tonight as your friends, seeking companionship during the long nights, admitting we are uncertain and have questions, ready to rest a while in your presence. As we bring to you our different emotions, in this time we can take off the mask that says we must behave a certain way, that we must not admit our sorrow. For we know, Lord Jesus, that you share in this sorrow with us. You too wept for a friend and for those who grieved their loss. You too have experienced the pain of parting, and yet you also bring to us a hope that breaks beyond the boundaries of what we know. May we come to this time and space to release our emotions into this offering of worship, acknowledging both our own grief and the grief of others, and receive the hope that you offer. Be ever present with us, Lord Jesus, our friend and companion, through life and death, through sorrow and joy, through ups and downs, through tears and laughter, through love and loss. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah in the 35th chapter. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with a vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, Grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the Holy Way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there. But the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Our gospel for today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, in the first chapter beginning at the 18th verse. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, 
and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it had been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother and knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem, who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled, because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child with his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled, he will be called a Nazarene. We hear these words by Anne Weems. The Christmas spirit is that hope which tenaciously clings to the hearts of the faithful and announces, in the face of any Herod the world can produce, and all the indoors slammed in our faces, and all the dark no nights of our souls, that with God all things still are possible, that even now unto us a child is born. Christmas wishes. My wish for you this Christmas is hope. That hope that things can be different, that the odds can be reversed, that justice can prevail that we can see God turning cartwheels right in front of our eyes. Why? 
because God is continually trying to attract our attention so that even in the darkness of life, we can see flickers of hope. My wish for you this Christmas is peace. Not that wee moment of darkness when all is quiet and you can take a breath, but peace that is deep and lasting, that seeps into everything you do, changing your perception, calming your fear, letting you relax as you have never done before. My wish for you this Christmas is love. The love that came in the form of a baby, born in poverty, and seen as a threat to political stability. That kind of love. Not sentimental or slushy, but grounded in the reality of a harsh and brutal life, fighting for survival, succeeding against the odds, making all the difference. Love that preserves and perseveres because love is of God. My wish for you this Christmas is joy. Joy that ripples right to your toes, not the easy smile you wear, or forced jollity you perform, but a joy that bubbles up from the depth, lifting your spirit, sending you soaring, leaving you reeling and breathless, the joy of the baby God. We invite you to light candles at home as we remember all those that have died this year. We remember those that have died from Trinity Lutheran Church. God did not wait till the world was ready, till nations were at peace. 
God came when the heavens were unsteady and prisoners cried out for release. God did not wait for the perfect time. God came when the need was deep and great. God dined with sinners in all their grime, turned water into wine. God did not wait till hearts were pure. In joy God came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt, to a world like ours of anguished shame. God came, and God's light would not go out. God came to a world which did not mesh, to heal its tangles, shield its scorn. In the mystery of the Word made flesh, the Maker of the stars was born. We cannot wait till the world is sane to raise our songs with joyful voice, or to share our grief, to touch our pain. Holy God of Advent, you became weak so we would find strength in moments of heartbreak. You left the safety of heaven to wander the wilderness of the world. Holding our hands when we feel hopeless, you set aside your glory to hold our pain so we might be healed. Even when there seems to be no hope, you became one of us so that we would never be alone in any moment, in any circumstance. So, so come, come now, child of Bethlehem, to strengthen us in these days. May we feel your presence in a way we have never known, not just as one born in a stable, long ago and far away, but as the one born in our hearts. You have promised to go before us, into our brokenness, into hospital rooms, into empty houses, into refugee camps, into war zones, into, into graveyards, into, into our future held by God. And you are here, even now, waiting for each of us to serve us, to hold us, to comfort us, to heal us, to live in us, now and forever. Amen. Receive God's blessing. May Christ's peace, that lightens the soul with faith, lifts the spirit with hope, and leavens the world with love, be yours tonight and always. And the blessing of God, the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer, go with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for joining us. We hope that this service of scripture and prayer, of music and candles, has been a source of comfort and hope on this longest night. Go in peace as we await the birth of the Prince of Peace.